Alrighty guys, so welcome to today's episode. Today is going to be a continuation of last week's episode of Here in the Pro Shop, um, where we found the PAP, and I taught you guys how to find your own PAP. And that's very important for today's episode because we're going to be going over how to lay out a bowling ball and selecting the best layout for your game. So, I wanna go over how to lay out a bowling ball. So on this, I have a Brunswick Phantom, and for today's layout, I'm gonna be putting a 55 by four and seven eighths by 70. So a little bit about the Brunswick Phantom, it's a symmetric solid, so it is symmetric. It does not have what's called a mass bias, but it does have a CG like all balls and a pin. The pin is the top of the core, that's how they mark it. And the CG is the center of gravity. So for symmetric bowling balls, we don't really care about this CG. Uh, it just is a little marking that says, hey, here's the center of gravity. It doesn't do anything to ball motion. I could put it, you know, I could put my fingers below it, above it, to the side of it, either way. It doesn't matter on ball motion. It's not going to affect it, but it is going to change how the ball looks. So if we want to keep the ball looking nice, then I try to use <clears throat> a first angle, which determines where that CG is placed. I try to use a first angle that kind of keeps it towards the center of the palm. Um, but for today's episode, we're going to be doing 55 degrees for that first angle. So, basically, the first line that you always want to draw is if it's symmetric from your pin through your CG. If it's asymmetric from your pin through your mass bias. And to show you guys a quick example of a mass bias, here is a track tactics that I have. And, as you see here next to the thumb, it has this little extra marking that's a little white dot. That is the mass bias. Because here's the pin, here's the CG, and here's the mass bias. So that's the main difference. And... We're not going to worry about that today since we have a symmetric ball. So, we're going to take our prosect or quarter scale as we learned about and used in the last episode. Be sure and check that out at the i card on your screen if you haven't yet. And we're going to draw that line straight through the CG and through the center of that pin. Make a nice white line there so we can see it very clearly. So now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our prosect, put the zero mark on the pin right there, and line it up so that we're nice and straight vertically. And we're going to choose that 55 degree angle right here. So halfway between the 50 and 60 mark, our 55 right there. Once we make our little dash or hash mark there, whatever you want to call it, then we draw our line through the mark, straight through the center of that pin. And now we have an intersecting line that is 55 degrees away. So now we line up our quarter scale on zero right there. And we go down and our pin to PAP distance that we want is four inches, four and seven eighths inches. So we go four and seven eighths down, make another little hash mark, bring our prosect this way, scooch up the ball a little bit, line up our prosect on that line, and of course vertically lining it up again in the center. And then the last angle that we want is 70 degrees. So we come down here to 70. And so what the what the, the pin to PAP distance does really quickly, three and three eighths pin to PAP distance. So from here, three and three eighths inches down is gonna be the most aggressive that you can make a ball. That basically means that the top of the core is in the most aggressive spot because the top of the core is marked by the pin again. Puts it in the most aggressive spot out of your hand based on your PAP whenever you lay out a ball this way. Okay, so the last part that we wanna take care of is now that we have our 70 degree angle marked out with that hash mark right there, we wanna make sure and draw through that hash mark straight through the mark that we made that's four and seven eighths inches over from the pin and draw this line nice and long there. And now we're gonna use my PAP to determine the rest of the layout. So my PAP is one and an eighth inches up. So right there, we're, so we're gonna go one and an eighth inches this direction towards me to go up. Down would be in the opposite direction towards this. So we're gonna go one and one eighth inches just like that. And then we're going to take that hash mark and make a perpendicular line again. And right on top of it, we're going to draw all the way over here because my PAP is five and five eighths inches over. So I'm gonna make my mark at five and five eighths inches over, just like that. So there's my new hash mark. And now here's where the span for you comes into play. So you take your span and you divide each number by two. So for me, I'm really lucky and my span is easy to divide. Uh, if your span is three inches to four inches, I'm really sorry. It's really hard math for you. But mine is four and an eighth on the middle finger and four and a quarter on the ring finger. So that means as I draw my line here, my perpendicular line using that middle point up here and zero on my quarter scale, 
then that means I'm going to divide by 2. So 4 and an eighth divided by 2 is 2 and 1 16th inches. So I make a hash mark there. And then for the ring finger, I have 4 and a quarter. So that means that 4 and a quarter divided by 2 is 2 and an eighth. So I'm going to make another hash mark there. I'm going to set it perpendicular yet again, just like this. Line it up on 0 and everything. And draw my lines across. And these are my finger lines. So now that I have that, put my ring finger line right there. Now that I have that, the last piece of the puzzle is to put the bridge. And of course, the easiest way to do it that I thought is a really awesome trick, line it up on zero and it happens to be a quarter inch from here to here. So whenever you do it, you just draw your lines like that and you've got a quarter inch bridge just like that, which is the most common. So now on this ball, I have a 55 by four and seven eighths by 70 layout and it's pinned down like that. So once I get this drilled up, I will show you guys the difference in how everything looks uh, with the holes in it, and we will go from there. Okay, so now I've got some holes in this Brunswick Phantom. As you can see, it's got that layout um, on it that we discussed before, the 55 by uh, 4 and 7 eighths by 70. So now that I've got this drilled up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a few other options that I have in my bag. So the Brunswick Phantom is a symmetric solid, it's symmetric, so this is an asymmetric solid which is the track tactics. The main difference, you can see there's a mass bias here, I know I talked about that earlier. So this layout is 60 by 5 by 40, as you can see it's pin up. Because as we talked about earlier as well, that last angle is going to change how high or low that the pin is. So if you have a really low last angle, that's going to make the pin really high above the fingers. And vice versa, if you have a really high last angle, then it's going to make it lower towards the below the fingers, just like this, which elongates that hook phase. If it's a uh, if it's a higher angle and if it's a lower angle, it shortens that hook phase and makes it quicker off the spot. So then the last thing I wanted to go over is this Rodman pearl that I have here, which is symmetric, it's symmetric pearl, and as you can see, it's got a little bit different of a layout. So this track tactics is my normal pin up layout at that 60 by 5 by 40. And my normal pin down layout is this Brunswick Phantom at the 55 by 4 and 7 eighths by uh, 70. And so with this Rodman Pearl, it's 35 by 4 and 3 eighths by 30. And I did that because I wanted something to be a little more hockey stick motion. Uh, I wanted it to be a little sharper off of the, the spot down lane whenever it hits the friction. Just to be a little bit sharper. And also I was looking for something that I can get quite a bit left with and have no problem getting it through the heads and getting it able to turn the corner down lane. So that's why the, especially the last angle is so important because that 30 degrees uh, raises that pin and makes it able to turn the corner a lot harder. Of course, once again, the pin is where the top of the core is. So that changes the direction that the core is facing. And that's why three and three eighths is the most aggressive spot once again. And the further away that you get from three and three eighths, the less aggressive of a spot you, you put the core in, making it uh, less flare potential, basically. And something like a short pin is also uh, able to be used as well. Just like this ball here, it has a short pin layout as I around here. So something right here, just like a, a, a Deviate Intimidator that my coach has, has a short pin layout. So as you can see, the fingers are here and it's far away from the fingers out to the right. And it's asymmetric, so it has that mass bias in a very weak position down here to the left of the thumb. So as you can see, the pin is here for a short pin layout, and that gives the ball a lot less flare potential and makes it more like a urethane type motion, quote unquote. Uh, just really tames the ball down and makes it uh, not a lot of flare potential once again, but also uh, smooths it out a ton and gives him another great option in his bag that works well with surface. So thank you for watching today, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with any questions that you have or if you want to see me go over future topics as well. And other than that, guys, have a great day.